Jason, Blood Church coming to you today. Going to do a video today on uh, Romans chapter 4. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up. We're doing a Roman study now. We're going through the KJV Bible, where a group of Christians who rightly divide the word of truth, and we're pre-millennial dispensationalists, and we believe the rapture of the church happens before the tribulation. Uh, your salvation is the most important thing, though, no matter what you believe about when the rapture is. Get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Past, present, future sins can all be washed away. One sin alone is enough to send you to hell. Jesus Christ is God, came down on the earth as, as Jesus, the Son of God, flesh and blood, perfect, never sinned, died on a cross when he, when he didn't have to, but he did. And he, what he did was he took on all the wrath of God and he took it down and uh, as God put all his wrath of all our sins on him, who didn't sin. Now, all the blood that he shed is what can, is what saves you if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that he is God and King, and he did die on the cross. According to 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, and according to that gospel, he did rise from the dead three days later, like only God can do. Romans chapter 4. So we're going to look at, it's Abraham and imputed righteousness. We just talked about imputed righteousness a little bit when Jesus died. He cleanses our souls of our own sin. Verse 1, what shall we say than that Abraham our father? So, important distinction. Paul is not using the expression Abraham our father the same way um, James uses it at James, at James 2.21. James is writing to the 12 tribes of Israel when he, when he speaks that. Um, at James 1.1, 1, 1, Paul is writing to all the... All the uh, all that be in Rome, Gentile and Jew. And you can see that in Romans 1, 7, both Jew and Gentile here in this, you know, in these, these, uh, in this books that he, he writes. Um, Romans 1, 16, 2, 10, and 3, 30 are all examples of that. Paul is referring to Abraham as father of the faithful or, or everybody who believes in Christ. And um, verse 12 shows that in the uh, Romans 4, we'll read it, 4.12, the Bible reads, And the father of the circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. Abraham was a Gentile, and um, he wasn't circumcised. And so it's, you know, the faith is um, the father of the faithful is who Abraham really is, according to verse twelve, and he does um, he does this also in Galatians three. So, just a footnote there: it's not talking about the twelve tribes, as pertain to the flesh have found. Verse two: For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. So, of course, Abraham did not have Jesus Christ to forgive him for his sins and his belief in Jesus. But he did have to believe in God. And it was imputed for him righteousness when he did so. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So if you're trying to work your way into heaven, you're just, you're just gaining more and more debt as you fail. Verse 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, that's Jesus Christ, his faith is counted for what? Righteousness. So there is no operation under the law. And it's exactly just, excuse me, you can see um, Exodus 23, 7 in the Old Testament that, gave, that forgave people for their sins, essentially. Um, that shows that, again, at, at verse 7 in Exodus 23, without cleaning them or taking them away, and so Paul, here in uh, verse 8, if, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Okay, so here in, in, in verse 8, where it says that the blessed is that man, that's from Psalms 32, 2, and it's a prophecy um, of what Jesus Christ does for the sinner in the New Testament on that cross. Amen. Romans you know, 5, uh, verse 6 and verse 10 shows that as well. And so... It is our faith that we're accounted righteousness. And it's important for us in this church age to believe on Jesus Christ for our salvation because he is the only way to the Father. Verse 6, so verse six, um, 
David here will prophesy of the coming imputed righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are those who, whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Uh, you can see that in Psalms 32, 1 and 2. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. We just talked about that. And David is foreshadowing um, this imputed righteousness. And of course, David was forgiven and was an exception to the rule when he broke the law. David was under the law. Abraham's uh, salvation is, is sort of a type of, of our salvation as well. Uh, verse 9, Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? That's a question. For we say that the faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. And so how was it then reckoned? Verse 10 asks that question when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in, but in uncircumcision. Verse 11, And he received the sign of circumcision, the seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, through they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Okay, so, you know, exactly Abraham had a covenant. Uh, with God and his people, his children were going to become, you know, the Jews, the people of the chosen people of God. And it was going to be come through his son, Isaac. And of course, Abraham, you know, he was, he was, he was seen as righteous as faith, but his salvation also was tested when he had to take his son up onto the mountain and offer him up for a sacrifice. And he, he did so. And in the Old Testament times, you have to remember the blood of Jesus Christ wasn't available to completely wash away your sins like we have today. It was a temporal cleansing with blood sacrifice of usually animals, and um, and then Jesus Christ came. They were able to be fully, you know, forgiven for their sins, and and to be washed clean by the blood, even though they're not Christians, uh, because that you know that wasn't the case. Uh, Abraham receives God imputed righteousness as an uncircumcised Gentile, um, not a circumcised Jew. Very important to note and to know and he was just as righteous as any jew would be abraham was as a gentile verse 13 for that for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith so that's how abraham is a beautiful representation of us christians here in the church age because he wasn't truly under the law but he, he was considered to be righteous by his faith and following the will of God, God when he was asked to take his son to sacrifice him, even though God had promised Isaac to be the seed of the future generations that were become, would become the people of God. And of course, I'm, sh I'm sure when he took him up, he trusted God because he laid him down. And I'm sure he probably even told Isaac that I have to do this, but you'll probably come back to life. God wants us to do it. So he willfully went at age about probably about 17, 18. He was probably a strapping young man who could overpower his father. But yet he he got on that mercy stone as well to be sacrificed. And then God said, hold up, hold up. You know, don't do that. Um, beautiful story. You know, indeed. And so verse 14, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. Be verse 15, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Amen to that. You know, we're not under the law. There's no transgression. We're not breaking it, essentially. Our soul is clean, even though our body is sinful. Uh, I talked about that in a, a, a previous video. Um, 4.15, um, this verse in Romans 5.13, if you look at that, will show you that God does not impute sin, as, as verse 8, to a child who has no knowledge, you know, of between good and evil, essentially. Um, that child is born um, dead in trespass and sins and is one of the children of wrath, Ephesians 2, 3, by nature. And so we're dead in our trespasses when we're born, Two, one. That's why it's very important, even at a young age, to give a kid, give a kid, a child, the gospel in case they die. Because if they have understanding of right and wrong, then they're, they now could be uh, you know, damned because of it. Of course, before they have understanding of right and wrong, or if there's somebody that's a Down syndrome child or uh, special needs, and, and uh, you know, of course, they, they don't have any idea of evil and wrong. They only know innocence. They're like a child. 
uh, there is no sin held over their head, even if they've committed it, because there's no knowledge of right and wrong. And they will go to heaven. Amen for that and for the mercies of God in that regard. Uh, verse thir 16, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So Abraham, of course, is the father of us all. And um, in his faith, you know, we're saved. Verse 17, it starts with Sarah and Abraham are given credit for their faith um, that they didn't even have. And so verse 17, is, as is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Amen. Before him who he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Verse 18, who against hope believed in hope? that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Um, you know, he believed in that hope when he left, when when Abraham left his hometown. Verse 19, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So Sarah couldn't have child, she was barren, and, and of course God changed that, as God can change anything. Verse 20, He staggered not at the promise of, of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen to that. And, um, you know, amazing sort of, sort of faith there. Um, you know, the scriptures talk about what's called common faith at Titus 1, 4. Human faith uh, at Mark eleven twenty two, Divine faith at Galatians 2, 20. Historical faith at 1 John 5, 10 through 13. Mental faith at James two fourteen and those of little faith at Matthew six thirty people that have wavering faith at James one six unfeigned faith at First Timothy one five and active faith at Hebrews ten nineteen through twenty two those are different kind of faiths that you'll see in the scriptures and something you can take a look at as well um, verse twenty one and being fully persuaded that he what he had promised, he was able to perform. Verse 22, And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. So Abraham was imputed righteous even though he wasn't righteous. Sound familiar? That sounds exactly like us today in the church age. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for all, for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Amen. We believe in that. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised against for our justification. Amen. You know, the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the only thing that saves, my friends. The only way to get to the Father. It's the only way to be imputed in righteousness and justified to the Lord so you can live with him forever and not spend time in eternal fire and hell and damnation. And, and, and that, I don't want anybody to go. Um, I pray for each and every one of you on the blood of Jesus Christ that you accept the free gift of salvation. If you already have, I pray that you continue your walk until our redemption, our blessed hope, which is the rapture. God bless and have a great day.